Hey there folks, welcome back for day seven of the 30 Days of Banjo. What you just heard is what we're gonna learn today. It's a combination of the roll patterns that we looked at yesterday and our previous version of Boil That Cabbage Down. And in the same way that we combined some other ideas in previous lessons, a lot of this is gonna be the same as what we already know how to do. We just have to tweak a few things. So for instance, in that first measure, we're just gonna play that alternating thumb roll. Then in the second measure, we're gonna play our forward roll variation while holding down our shape here for that C chord. That's the same shape that you're already playing in your other versions of this tune. We're just applying the forward roll variation pattern in the right hand to it. Then in the next measure, we return to our alternating thumb roll. Then we're gonna do something slightly different for the next measure. We already know that we wanna put our middle finger on the second fret of the third string, like usual, but we're gonna add our index finger here on the first fret of the second string. That's gonna give us a more full chord shape and more of the sound that we want for this chord, which ends up being D or D7, but you don't have to think about that too much. As long as you're holding this shape, then we can play our forward backward roll. Great, now let's just look at this first half as we have it so far. Alternating thumb roll. Forward roll variation. Alternating thumb roll. Forward backward roll, adding the index finger on the first fret of the second string. Great. Now we repeat the first half of that again. Now, this next measure, we have something again, slightly different. We're gonna play our alternating thumb roll. Then we're gonna do it again with this D shape again, this D7 shape. So all together, that's like this. Not so bad. Then we just have a short pinching pattern at the end. So there's not too much new information there, but we are combining some things that we already know. Here's a closer look at all of that. Because there's kind of a lot of new information here, this is mostly what you're gonna to wanna to be practicing, but if you have time or if you're comfortable enough, then feel free to practice the material from previous lessons. But this is really the main event, so focus your time here. In terms of practicing and homework, you wanna treat this the way that you've treated the other things, which is to play it slowly enough that you can transition smoothly between chords. You don't wanna do this. I'd rather hear you do this. And if you can do that, if you can play that slowly and that evenly spaced, then you can speed that up a little bit. And then you can speed that up a little bit. And then you'll be playing full speed in no time. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Make sure you practice that. Your featured banjo player for this lesson is Bill Keith. And Bill is a really interesting banjo player because he's an early departure from a lot of the things that we've heard Earl Scruggs or Ralph Stanley or J.D. Crow play. He pioneered something called melodic style that sounds a little bit like this. It, just like the way that Don Reno played single string style, is another way that you can play melodies like a guitar or a fiddle, 
on the banjo. So check out the playlist in the description and see if you enjoy some of that music as well. Also, if you don't mind, please subscribe to this channel and like this video. That's a huge thing that you can do to help me make more of these videos. If you do that, I really appreciate it. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for day eight of the 30 Days of Banjo. Bye.